Napoleon Bonaparte, military leader and emperor of France 1769 to 1821. Napoleon Bonaparte born the 15th of August 1769 to 5 May 1821, later known by his regnal name Napoleon I, was a French emperor and military commander who rose to prominence during the French Revolution and led successful campaigns during the Revolutionary Wars. He was the leader of the French Republic as first consul from 1799 to 1804, then of the French Empire as Emperor of the French from 1804 until 1814, and briefly again in 1815. His political and cultural legacy endures as a celebrated and controversial leader. He initiated many enduring reforms, but has been criticized for his authoritarian rule. He is considered one of the greatest military commanders in history and his wars and campaigns are still studied at military schools worldwide. However, historians still debate whether he was responsible for the Napoleonic Wars in which between 3 and 6 million people died. Napoleon Bonaparte's rise and fall marked a tumultuous period in European history, encompassing military triumphs, political upheavals, and the ultimate defeat. The journey begins with his early military successes and culminates in his exile and death. Let's traverse this historical landscape step by step. Rise to Power 1. Italian Campaign 1796 to 1797 Napoleon's military career gained momentum with victories in Italy during the French Revolutionary Wars. His strategic brilliance and innovative tactics garnered attention, earning him the nickname the Little Corporal. 2. Coup d'état 1799. Seizing the political opportunity, Napoleon orchestrated a coup in 1799, becoming first consul of France. This consolidated power paved the way for his eventual proclamation as emperor in 1804.3. Military triumphs 1805-1807. Napoleon's Grand Army achieved significant victories at Austerlitz. 1805 Van Gene Aurist 1806. The Treaty of Tilsit 1807 solidified French dominance, reshaping Europe's political landscape. Zenith of power. 4. Continental System Napoleon implemented the Continental System to economically weaken Britain by isolating it from European trade. This policy, however, faced challenges and led to tensions with other European nations. 5. Peninsular War 1808 1814 The conflict in the Iberian Peninsula strained French resources and highlighted the limitations of Napoleon's imperial reach. Guerrilla warfare and popular uprisings pose significant challenges. 6. Russian Campaign 1812. The invasion of Russia proved catastrophic as the harsh winter and Russian resistance inflicted severe losses on the Grand Army. This retreat marked a turning point, signaling the vulnerability of Napoleon's forces. Downfall 7. Defeats in Europe 1813 1814. The Battle of Leipzig 1813, also known as the Battle of Nations, witnessed Napoleon's first significant defeat against a coalition. Allied forces marched towards Paris, leading to Napoleon's abdication in 1814.8. Exiled to Elbe 1814. Following his abdication, Napoleon was exiled to the island of Elbe in the Mediterranean. However, he escaped in 1815, initiating the Hundred Days. 9. Waterloo 1815. The Battle of Waterloo proved decisive, with Napoleon facing combined British and Prussian forces. Defeat at Waterloo led to his second abdication, marking the end of his rule. 10. Exile to St. Helen 1815-1821. Napoleon was exiled to St. Helena in the South Atlantic where he lived in isolation. His health deteriorated, and debates persist about the circumstances surrounding his death in 18-1. Legacy colon 11. Impact on Europe. The Congress of Vienna 1814-1815 aimed to restore stability, reshaping European borders and alliances. Napoleon's legacy influenced subsequent political developments and nationalist movements. Daddles of Napoleon. 
which defeated Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo in June 1815. The British exiled him to the remote island of St. Helena in the Atlantic, where he died in 1821 at the age of 51. Napoleon had a lasting impact on the world, bringing modernizing reforms to France and Western Europe and stimulating the development of nation-states. He also sold the Louisiana Territory to the United States in 1803 doubling the size of the United States. However, his exploitation of conquered territories, mixed occurred on civil rights, reintroduction of slavery in France's colonies, and repression of the Haitian Revolution are controversial and adversely affect his reputation. Early Life Napoleon's family was of Italian origin. His paternal ancestors, the Buonapartes, descended from a minor Tuscan noble family that emigrated to Corsica in the 16th century and his maternal ancestors, the Raimolinos, descended from a minor Genos noble family. His parents Carlo Murillo, Onapart, and Maria Letizio, a Molino maintained an ancestral home called Casa Bonaparte, known nowadays as Maison Bonaparte, in Ajaccio. Napoleon was born there on the 15th of August 1769. He was the family's fourth child and third son. He had an elder brother, Joseph, and younger siblings Lucien, Eliza, Louis, Pauline, Caroline, and Jerome. Napoleon was baptized as a Catholic under the name Napoleon in his youth. His name was also spelled as Nabulioni, Nabulio, Napoleon, and Napoleon. Napoleon was born one year after the Republic of Genoa ceded Corsica to France. The state sold sovereign rights a year before his birth and the island was conquered by France. During the year of his birth, it was formally incorporated as a province in 1770. After 500 years under Genoa's rule and 14 years of independence, Napoleon's parents joined the Corsican resistance and fought against the French to maintain independence even when Maria was pregnant with him. His father Carlo was an attorney who had supported and actively collaborated with Patriot Pasquale Tully during the Corsican War of Independence against France. After the Corsican defeat at Pont Novo in 1769 and Tully's exile in Britain, Carlo began working for the new French government and in 1777 was named representative of the island to the court of Louis XVI. The dominant influence of Napoleon's childhood was his mother, whose firm discipline restrained a rambunctious child. Later in life, Napoleon said, The future destiny of the child is always the work of the mother. His maternal grandmother had married into the Swiss Fesch family in her second marriage, and Napoleon's uncle, the Cardinal Joseph Fesch, fulfilled a role as protector of the Bonaparte family for some years. Napoleon's noble, Moderately affluent background afforded him greater opportunities to study and were available to a typical Corsican of the time. When he turned nine years old, he moved to the French mainland and enrolled at a religious school in Autun in January 1779. In May, he transferred with a scholarship to a military academy at brienne le chateau in his youth he was an outspoken Corsican nationalist and supported the state's independence from France. Like many Corsicans, Napoleon spoke and read Corsican as his mother tongue and Italian as the official language of Corsica. He began learning French in school at the age of around 10, although he became fluent in French. He spoke with a distinctive Corsican accent and never learned to spell in French. Consequently, Napoleon was routinely bullied by his peers for his accent, birthplace, short stature, mannerisms, and inability to speak French quickly. He became reserved and melancholy. Applying himself to reading, an examiner observed that Napoleon has always been distinguished for his application in mathematics. He is fairly well acquainted with history and geography. This bow would make an excellent sailor. One story told of Napoleon at the school is that he led junior students to victory against senior students in a snowball fight, showing his leadership abilities. In early adulthood, Napoleon briefly intended to become a writer. He authored a history of Corsica and a romantic novella. 
On completion of his studies at Brienne in 1784, Napoleon was admitted to the École Militaire in Paris. He trained to become an artillery officer and, when his father's death reduced his income, was forced to complete the two-year course in one year. He was the first Corsican to graduate from the École Militaire. He was examined by the famed scientist Pierre Simon Laplace. Early Career Upon graduating in September 1785, Bonaparte was commissioned a second lieutenant in La Faire Artillery Regiment. He served in Valence and Oxen until after the outbreak of the French Revolution in 1789. Bonaparte was a fervent Corsican nationalist during this period. He asked for leave to join his mentor Pasquale Pauli. When Pauli was allowed to return to Corsica by the National Assembly, but Pauli had no sympathy for Napoleon, as he deemed his father a traitor for having deserted the cause of Corsican independence. He spent the early years of the revolution in Corsica, fighting in a complex three-way struggle among royalists, revolutionaries, and Corsican nationalists. Napoleon embraced the ideals of the revolution, becoming a supporter of the Jacobins and joined the pro-French Corsican Republicans who opposed. Pauli's policy and his aspiration to secede. He was given command over a battalion of volunteers and promoted to captain in the regular army in 1792. Despite exceeding his leave of absence and leading a riot against French troops, when Corsica declared formal secession from France and requested the protection of the British government, Napoleon and his commitment to the French Revolution came into conflict with Pauli who had decided to sabotage the Corsican contribution to the Expedition di Sardini by preventing a French assault on the Sardinian island La Maddalena. Bonaparte and his family were compelled to flee to Toulon on the French mainland in June 1793 because of the split with Pauli. Although he was born Napoleon Bonaparte, it was after this that Napoleon began styling himself Napoleon Bonaparte. His family did not drop the name Bonaparte, until 1796, the first known record of him signing his name as Bonaparte was at the age of 27 in 1796. Siege of Toulon In July 1793, Bonaparte published a pro-Republican pamphlet, Le Super de Beaucaire Supper at Beaucaire, which gained him the support of Augustine Robespierre, the younger brother of the revolutionary leader Maximilien Robespierre. With the help of his fellow Corsican Antoine Christophe Salicetti, Bonaparte was appointed senior gunner and artillery commander of the Republican forces that arrived at Toulon on the 8th of September. He adopted a plan to capture a hill where Republican guns could dominate the city's harbor and force the British to evacuate. The assault on the position led to the capture of the city, and during it Bonaparte was wounded in the thigh on the 16th of December. Catching the attention of the Committee of Public Safety, he was put in charge of the artillery of France's Army of Italy. On the 22nd of December, he was on his way to a new post in Nice, promoted from colonel to brigadier general at the age of 24. He devised plans to attack the Kingdom of Sardinia as part of France's campaign against the First Coalition. The French army carried out Bonaparte's plan in the Battle of Sorgio in April 1794, and then advanced to seize Ormia in the mountains from Ormia. It headed west to outflank the Austro-Sardinian positions around Sorge. After this campaign, Augustine Robespierre sent Bonaparte on a mission to the Republic of Genoa to determine that country's intentions towards France. 13. Vendemiaire some contemporaries allege that Bonaparte was po under house arrest at Nice for his association with the Robespierres following their fall in the Thermidorian reaction. In July 1794, Bonaparte's secretary Berrien disputed the allegation in his memoirs. According to Berrien, jealousy was responsible between the Army of the Alps and the Army of Italy with whom Bonaparte was seconded at the time. Bonaparte dispatched an impassioned defense in a letter to the Commissar Sulicetti and was acquitted of any wrongdoing. He was released within two weeks on the 20th of August 
and due to his technical skills, was asked to draw up plans to attack Italian positions in the context of France's war with Austria. He also took part in an expedition to take back Corsica from the British, but the French were repulsed by the British Royal Navy. By 1795, Bonaparte had become engaged to Desiree Clary, daughter of Francois Clary. Desiree's sister Julie Clary had married Bonaparte's brother Joseph in April 1795. He was assigned to the Army of the West, which was engaged in the war in the Vendia Civil War and Royalist Counter-Revolution in Vendy, a region in west-central France on the Atlantic Ocean, as an infantry command. It was a demotion from artillery general for which the army already had a full quota, and he pleaded poor health to avoid the posting. He was moved to the Bureau of Topography of the Committee of Public Safety. He sought unsuccessfully to be transferred to Constantinople to offer his services to the Sultan. During this period, he wrote the romantic novella Clisonet Eugenie about a soldier and his lover. In a clear parallel to Bonaparte's own relationship with Clary, on the 15th of September, Bonaparte was removed from the list of generals in regular service for refusing to serve in the Vendy campaign. He faced a difficult financial situation and reduced career prospects. On the 3rd of October, royalists in Paris declared a rebellion against the National Convention. Paul Barras, a leader of the Thermidorian reaction, knew of Bonaparte's military exploits at Toulon and gave him command of the improvised forces in defense of the convention, and earned Bonaparte sudden fame, wealth, and the patronage of the new government, the Directory. Marat married one of Bonaparte's sisters. He also served as one of Bonaparte's generals. Bonaparte was promoted to commander of the interior and given command of the Army of Italy. Within weeks, he was romantically involved with Josephine de Beauharnais, the former mistress of Barris. The couple married on the 9th of March 1796 in a civil ceremony. First Italian Campaign Two days after the marriage, Bonaparte left Paris to take command of the Army of Italy. He immediately went on the offensive, hoping to defeat the forces of Kingdom of Sardinia 1720-1861 before their Austrian allies co. intervene. In a series of rapid victories during the Montenot campaign, he knocked Piedmont out of the war in two weeks. The French then focused on the Austrians for the remainder of the war, the highlight of which became the protracted struggle for Mantua. The Austrians launched a series of offensives against the French to break the siege, but Bonaparte defeated every relief effort, winning the battles of Costiglione, Bassano, Arcoli, and Rivoli. The decisive French triumph at Rivoli in January 1797 led to the collapse of the Austrian position. In Italy, at Rivoli, the Austrians lost up to 14,000 men while the French lost about 5,000. The next phase of the campaign featured the French invasion of the Habsburg heartlands. French forces in southern Germany had been defeated by the Archduke Charles in 1796. But Charles withdrew his forces to protect Vienne after learning of Bonaparte's assault. In the first encounter between the two, Bonaparte pushed Charles back and advanced deep into Austrian territory after winning the Battle of Tarvis in March 1797. The Austrians were alarmed by the French thrust that reached all the way to Leoben, about 100 kilometers from Vienna, and decided to sue for peace. The Treaty of Leoben, followed by the more comprehensive Treaty of Campo Formio, gave France control of most of northern Italy and the Low Countries, and a secret clause promised the Republic of Venice to Austria. Bonaparte marched on Venice and forced its surrender, ending 1,100 years of Venetian independence. He authorized the French to loot treasures such as the horses of St. Mark on the journey. Bonaparte conversed much about the warriors of antiquity, especially Alexander, Caesar, Scipio, and Hannibal. He studied their strategy and combined it with his own, to a question from Berean, asking whether he preferred Alexander or Caesar. Bonaparte said that he placed Alexander in the first rank, the main reason being his campaign in Asia. 
His application of conventional military ideas to real-world situations enabled his military triumphs, such as creative use of artillery as a mobile force to support his infantry. He said later in life, when I have fought 60 battles and I have learned nothing which I did not know at the beginning. Look at Caesar, he fought the first like the last. Bonaparte could win battles by concealing troop deployments and concentrating his forces on the hinge of an enemy's weakened front if he could not use his favorite envelopment strategy. He would take up the central position and attack to cooperating forces at their hinge. Swing round to fight one until it fled, then turn to face the other. In this Italian campaign, Bonaparte's army captured 150,000 prisoners, 540 cannons, and 170 standards. The French army fought 67 actions and won 18 pitch battles through superior artillery technology and Bonaparte's tactics. During the campaign, Bonaparte became increasingly influential in French politics. He founded two newspapers, one for the troops in his army and one for circulation in France. The royalists attacked him for looting Italy and warned that he might become a dictator. Bonaparte's forces extracted an estimated $45 million in funds from Italy during their campaign. There, another $12 million in precious metals and jewels. His forces confiscated more than 300 priceless paintings and sculptures. Bonaparte sent General Pierre Augereau to Paris to lead a coup d'état and purge the royalists on 4. September the coup of 18 Fructidor. This left Beres and his Republican allies in control again, a dependent upon Bonaparte, who proceeded to peace negotiations with Austria. These negotiations resulted in the Treaty of Campo Formio. Bonaparte returned to Paris on 5 December 1797. As a hero, he met Talleyrand, France's new foreign minister who served in the same capacity for Emperor Napoleon and they began to prepare to invade Britain. Egyptian Expedition after two months of planning, Bonaparte decided that France's naval strength was not yet sufficient to confront the British Royal Navy. He decided on a military expedition to seize Egypt and thereby undermine Britain's access to its trade interests in India. Bonaparte wished to establish a French presence in the Middle East and join forces with Tipu Sultan, the Sultan of Mysore, an enemy of the British, Bonaparte assured the Directory that as soon as he had conquered Egypt, he will establish relations with the Indian princes and, together with them, attack the English in their possessions. The Directory agreed in order to secure a trade route to the Indian subcontinent. In May 1798, Bonaparte was elected a member of the French Academy of Sciences. His Egyptian expedition included a group of 167 scientists, with mathematicians, naturalists, chemists, and geodesists among them. Their discoveries included the Rosetta Stone, and their work was published in the Description de l'Egypte in 1809. En route to Egypt Bonaparte reached Malta on the 9th of June 1798, then controlled by the Knights Hospitaller. Grand Master Ferdinand von Hompesch zu Bolheim surrender after token resistance, and Bonaparte captured an important naval base with the loss of only three men. Bonaparte and his expedition eluded pursuit by the Royal Navy and landed at Alexandria on the 1st of July. He fought the Battle of Shubra Kid against the Mamluks, Egypt's ruling military caste. This helped the French practice their defensive tactic for the Battle of the Pyramids on the 21st of July. About 24 kilometers 15 miles from the pyramids, Bonaparte's forces of 25,000 roughly equaled those of the Mamluks Egyptian cavalry. 29 French and approximately 2,000 Egyptians were killed. The victory boosted the French army's morale. On the 1st of August 1798, the British fleet under Sir Horatio Nelson captured or destroyed all but two vessels of the French fleet in the Battle of the Nile, preventing Bonaparte from strengthening the French position in the Mediterranean. His army had succeeded in a temporary increase of French power in Egypt, though it faced repeated uprisings in early 1799. He moved an army into the Ottoman province of Damascus, Syria and Galilee. 
Bonaparte led these 13,000 French soldiers in the conquest of the coastal towns of Arish, Gaza, Jaffa, and Haifa. The attack on Jaffa was particularly brutal. Bonaparte discovered that many of the defenders were former prisoners of war, ostensibly on parole. So he ordered the garrison and some 1,500 to 5,000 prisoners to be executed by bayonet or drowning. Men, women, and children were robbed and murdered for three days. Bonaparte began with an army of 13,000 men. 1,500 were reported missing. 1,200 died in combat, and thousands perished from disease, mostly bubonic plague. He failed to reduce the fortress of Acre, so he marched his army back to Egypt in May to speed the retreat. Bonaparte ordered plague-stricken men to be poisoned with opium. The number who died remains disputed, ranging from 30 to 580. He also brought out 1,000 wounded men, Back in Egypt on the 25th of July, Bonaparte defeated an Ottoman amphibious invasion at Abukir. 